what I want to do now is apply the conservation of mass to an open system. Obviously, we don't have this for a closed system because there's no mass leaving or entering the system. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to the previous segment over here. So this is the question that I pose. Let's say that I have an, a, a, you know, is there a relationship in the mass, not the energy, but rather the mass itself? Let's say that I have five kilograms coming in, right? Um, does five, ne five kilogram needs to leave out somewhere else too? Is that what it is? That's what I want to talk about, okay, in this particular segment. It is not very dense, okay? But um, let me do some kind of like a, 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 an arbitrary, you know, kind of a system, right? So let's say that I have this. Yeah, I'm like making this up, obviously. Something like this. And let's say that there's two inlets and there's two exits, okay? Um, obviously, the system that I will be dealing with, this can be pistons too. Right? You can have like uh, pistons or like uh, syringes if you think about it, pushing and uh, you know pulling and etc. And you may get work out of it. Right? That is some feasible um, examples of this. Right? So I can uh, let me finish this. Uh, so I can you know like I can put a piston in here. The fluid can move here. The fluid can move here. I can have some kind of an open piston. Right? Um, and fluid can come out of it. Right? So the question I'm posing is looking at. Uh, let's say that some over some particular time, over uh, some time, you know, doesn't really matter, let's say five seconds, um, let's say that this M1, M2, M3, and M4. So, is there any uh, relationship between them? So, the answer is kind of yes, but like this way. So, M1 plus M2 will be coming into my system. I think everybody agrees with that, right? And M3 and M4 are leaving my system. And this difference will give me the mass of the system that I have over here, the control volume that I have over time. So if I have more mass coming in than mass leaving out, I'm going to have more. That kind of makes sense over some time, right? Right. So you can see I have more coming in than out. So it's somewhere it's going to accumulate. Okay. And also we can write this for like this. Um, you know, I don't want to write like one, two, three, four, five. You know, if they have multiple of them, I can send the summation over all the masses minus over the exits that I have, I mean exit will be the delta M of my control volume. This is cool, this is nice, but in reality I don't really deal with this, the masses. What I really do deal with is mass flow rates. That will give me much more information than simply masses, okay? Because whenever I say mass, let's say 5 kilogram comes in, right? We kind of need to ask, oh, you know, like the, the entire dynamics will be different if this five kilograms comes in over a second or a minute, isn't it? Right? So that's why I'm more dealing with mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate that has that information that has whether five kilograms is coming in a second or in a minute. And I simply, uh, if you look at up here, and I can simply, I don't want to draw this whole thing again, but or maybe let's write this m.2, m.1, m.2. Three and m dot four, right? So then, okay, not a big deal. M dot one plus m dot two. These are the entrance exits are m dot three minus m dot four. This time around, this will be the uh, the rate of change of my mass uh, of the control volume, or rather the system. They are the same thing for an open system over time. Mm, not a big deal, and m dot one, m dot two, m dot three. Did we cover that? Oh yeah, we covered this in the previous segment so you may want to look into that um, row 2 b2 a2 etc okay i'm not going to write the, the third and the fourth but you get the point okay um, you know just to make sure this is like that okay you know uh, absolute science so there's are just positives because you already count for negatives over here so if you want to write m dot you need to write it as a positive value and a negative value okay and i can do the same treatment to here that i did for the mass doesn't have to just have two, I can have 20, which is rare, but well, it is what it is, right? But we have to generalize this. So if we generalize this, I get myself m dot will be, uh, you can either call this delta m dot cv or like I did m c v d t. Okay, okay, so that's actually, you know, I have some good news for you. This is actually it, so it's not that uh, complicated as you can see, right. Um, and a simple example that I don't want to, you know, focus on an example for this particular case because it's kind of simple. So you can see over here, let's say I have this, right? A 
just say that I have one kilogram per second coming in, two kilogram per second coming in from another one, and let's say that I have three kilogram per second coming out. So what happens to this particular system? So you can see over here, here I have two inlets, so one and two, right here, one and two, so it's going to be three kilogram per second, and I have only one exit, let's say, and three, and the three, so that's going to be three kilograms. So you can see nothing will be stored in the control volume, but not the same mass, okay? If you look at the particles, like a particle that, that comes here is not leaving here, because you can see it's going to push it, if this is a, let's say, especially incompressible like a liquid, it's not the same mass that's leaving. That's why the energy will change, as I'll illustrate in a minute, okay? But at this point, you need to understand that, so the, the, the atoms that is entering in here is not the same one is leaving, okay? There's a difference, so my system is changing over time, although I have the same amount coming in and same amount, amount coming out, okay? So I've kind of nice, uh, you know, good news that you should uh, be happy about, um, because in thermodynamics, we typically deal with steady state, steady flow devices. Steady state, steady flow devices. So I want to talk about what a steady is. Okay, steady, and I want to look at it from two angles. The first angle is I'm going to look at it from the mathematics. The second angle I'm going to look at is the physics, fundamental physics. Okay, the mathematics is kind of simple. So I have uh, something over here, some kind of a property of the control volume. Obviously, I'm specifying it for the control volume that I'm dealing with over here. Right. It simply says that over time, it doesn't change, okay? So it doesn't change. So, okay, now, is this, um, you know, there's so much misunderstanding of what a steady is, so I'm gonna go back to the physics side of things and explain uh, from real life, okay? So let's say that this is my system. What this means is, um, let's talk about something that is wrong at first, but then I'll talk about what is right. You see, there's a second over here, this looks like that, Right? So there's a time dependence, so this must be zero. Okay? So for steady this is zero, steady this is zero, steady this is zero. That is incorrect. Okay? That is not good. Because steady means is this. This one that I'm looking at is not changing over time. This two is not changing over time. Okay? And my typical example for these kind of cases is this. Let's say that I have this setup running and I'm looking at the energy of this particular system, right? Um, and I go to lunch, right? I was hungry. I went to lunch. I come back from the lunch and I see this exactly the same. It did not change a bit. Now that is a steady system, okay? One other thing that I want to talk about steady is sometimes the system may be, may seem like unsteady. That is uh, not steady, right? Unsteady is the name for it. Let's say that I have a, I don't know, like a, a mountain, right? Um, there is water coming down in, in, on the river. Right, as an example, and I'm, you know, extracting energy from this uh, river. Is the river flow rate going to be the same in January versus in July? The answer is no, right? Obviously, there will be, maybe it will be frozen up here, right? So there will not be much flow down here where I can extract that energy, right? But in July, there will be far more flow over here, or it may be zero, because now it's too hot, right? Maybe in April, I will have much more when the ice is melting, as an example, okay? This example is not good for you that we don't have mountains here, we don't have ice, but you get the point. This can be taken as steady. See? See? It looks tricky. Why? Because if I look at the time frame, it's important to look at the time frame. The time frame, if I look at over yearly, and again I'm ignoring our global warming over here, but um, if every January, same amount of flow comes here, every January, same, same flow, right, on average, and if I have in July, it will be much less, or let's say in April, this is significantly more, but it's in every single April, it's significantly more, I can take this as a steady, and we call this steady over time, okay? So the steady analysis is much more common than you think it is, okay? That's what I wanna say. So I talk too much, or as usual. Um, so what is the uh, implication for this particular equation? The implication for this particular equation, for if you look at from the mathematics, is this is zero, then this will be zero too. Right? This is a partial, this is much more generic than, uh, you know, a special case of a partial differentiation, which is regular derivative. So that term will go to zero. Well, uh, again, that's math. Let's talk about physics. So what it means is, you know, think about it. Let's say that one comes over here and two comes over here and the exit is, let's say, uh, two. Okay. So then over time, my system cannot be the same, right? It keeps accumulating some more mass because 
three kilogram per second is coming in, two kilogram per second is leaving out. So every second I'm accu accumulating one kilogram over here. So if I look at that example of before and after lunch, you can see now that after lunch, the system will be completely different, right? Maybe the flow rates will change too, because there will be more mass accumulating as an example. The shape may change because I, you know, I cannot contain if this is incompressible. If this is compressible, then the pressure may change over here because I'm dumping more atoms into the same uh, volume. Okay, so steady is good. So you can see up here that what happens is that I get myself this inlet, and that inlet, exit, and that exit will be equal to zero. Okay, so whatever comes in must come out is what it means. I can actually more commonly. We write this this way, which will make sense to you in a minute. I can't equate them, right? So this is a very important uh, result that I would like you to know, okay? Because we will be using this very often. With that, thank you for watching this segment. I'll be back with the flow of work and energy. So now I'm switching gears to the conservation of energy, okay? Thank you.